Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk to you guys about SSD caching. This is another before you buy and I want to give you guys five important things to bear in mind before going ahead and investing in SSDs to improve your NAS's performance because SSD cache is beneficial, it is important and it will improve the read and write access and general return of data from your NAS in a number of ways, but not in all the ways. And a number of you may be on the verge of buying SSDs to improve your NAS and its performance, and you're not actually going to see the benefits. You're just throwing your money away. So today I want to cover these five points and hopefully help you decide whether you should invest in SSDs for your NAS. So reason number one, that a number of you you know, might or might not go for SSDs in your NAS is because the SSD caching system as it stands currently really only largely benefits random access of data on your NAS. So what that means is if you're doing frequently accessed data on your system, but smaller data that is more regularly accessed over and over again, we are talking background metadata, we are talking um, any files, we are talking config files, we are talking thumbnails, all those files that are more regularly accessed, maybe on a shared drive, but not in a timely fashion and kind of dotted all over the drives, these are the ones that are going to see the benefit in a system of SSD caching. We will talk a little bit about the difference there of uh, random and sequential in a bit. But if you aren't accessing your NAS in that way and you are dealing with big blocks of data pretty regularly, you are not really going to see the benefit with those larger files and the way they are constructed and the data is laid out across the disk. So do bear that in mind. The SSD caching benefits those users in that fashion. Reason number two that you might or might not want to go for SSD caching is that SSD cache does not really support those large file types. And I already touched on that just now, but it's worth really zooming in on that point because a number of you will say, oh, I'll get SSDs to help me in my Plex Media server. And there are benefits in the same way there are benefits to virtual machine utilization. But bear in mind, the big bulky image files, the big bulky video, video files, they are not the ones that will see the benefit. It's the smaller data, the surrounding data. And again, the reason for that is to do with that difference between random and sequential. So sequential data, when it's read across the disk, is a bunch of data that's all blocked together anyway. So when it's being accessed, there is no inherent performance benefits. It just goes for each part in the the line there of the data. Now, random read access across the disks is going to be all of this. We're going over there to get the metadata. We're getting the index data. We're getting and all of this random data being accessed in all these different areas. Now, big blocks of video data. Again, I'm going to keep coming back to video um, media streaming and stuff like that. None of that access there is random. It's purely sequential. It's only the surrounding data. So, that you will feel the difference. You'll know. You'll notice the difference of pages loading up of metadata a lot quicker. The layout of data may load that little tiny bit faster. With all the difference being in near millisecond, uh, kind of intuitive feeling difference, but not really measurable unless you measure over a grandiose scale. So. Bear in mind that the benefits of SSD caching don't really target those users who are dealing with big files all the time and specifically media file watchers. The next thing to bear in mind is the difference between the two kinds of predominantly used caching in NAS, read-only and read and write cache. There are other ones, write-only and stuff like that, and write-back and stuff, but I'm going to lay off those a little bit because a lot of those go into the way the software on the NAS interacts with it, and different NAS brands have their own varying range of SSD cache supported, but these predominant two, a read-only and read-write cache, are kind of the main two to go for. So what are the different differences between them? Well... Let's focus on read-only cache first. Read-only cache, you can get away with a single SSD. You can use a group of SSDs, and they will be put into a RAID 0, but you can get away with a single SSD. Read-only cache is when you are interacting with the NAS, the data that you send to the NAS is put on to the main hard drive storage array, and then those frequently accessed files, uh, or background, any files, that sort of thing, are moved onto the cache and then when you are accessing them from the NAS you are drawing them from the cache as the system deems them appropriate enough to be moved on there for you to draw from them. The result is if that SSD dies 
you're not going to lose anything because all that data was on the hard drives anyway. And again, it's more affordable, but the benefits are only seen in the reading and of course not in the writing. Now, with read write cache, it's a slightly different scenario. First and foremost, you need to have at least two SSDs and some systems support multiple, which will be in generally a RAID 1 environment. You can kind of do it with a RAID 5, but I would strongly recommend uh, those two disks in a RAID 1 environment because read write caching is when, when you are sending data to the NAS, it passes through that cache on its way to the hard drive array there. And again, that is one of the main benefits of write cache. It improves the performance of both write and read in the same way that read only did, but one of the main, main, main reasons that you need the two disk in a RAID there, because there is a chance, very, very small, that as you write onto the cache, if the cache fails due to the NAND wearing it out, the interface dying, or any one part of that, the SSD dying, you potentially lose that data that's going towards, or it creates a corruption on the data which then moves onto the hard drives. And that is why you need the two disks in the RAID, in the same way you'd have hard drives in a RAID to protect yourself from those sort of events happening. Now, of course, read-write cache is more expensive and read-write cache will result in you having 50% of the capacity. So two 1TB SSDs in a read-only cache will give you two TB. Two 1TB drives, uh, SSD drives in a read-write cache will only give you 1TB, so two, one. Bear in mind it's going to cost you twice as much to have that amount of cache capacity. Generally, I would always recommend read-write cache because you get the performance both ways, and you've got that RAID um, fail-safe there in case one of them dies. Next, we can talk about the memory utilization of cache because in order to take advantage of SSD caching on your system, it's not just about the hard drives and the CPU and the SSDs you're chucking inside. You do need sufficient memory in the background to make sure that the cache is handled appropriately by the system. Ultimately, you need the system resources to negotiate the cache, whether that is the data being moved over to the read-only cache or the handling of data during the pass-through of that write cache there. Now, uh, one gig of SSD that's gonna be utilized for cache will require 416 kilobits of memory. So if you are looking at a 500 gig um, SSD cache, you're gonna need about 203, 204 megabytes of cache. So again, about a fifth of a gig of memory is required for 500 gig of cache. And that doesn't seem like a lot. But if you're running a NAS that's got two gig of memory, you're already going to lose about three to four hundred meg generally from the SSD uh, from the OS on your NAS running. If you're going to run Plex Media Server, you're going to lose at least another gig there uh, in general utilization. So on a two gig NAS, two to three hundred meg for SSD caching is actually quite a big demand. So make sure you take care of the fact that you've got enough memory before you go down the road of installing SSDs for caching. Otherwise, there will be insufficient memory to run the caching and your system will lag appallingly and ultimately you'll lose any benefit you were gonna have of SSD caching. The last point is one that I'm pleased to say is slowly going away, but it's still out there and something you have to bear in mind. Now, when you create an area of SSD caching, be it read-only or read-write caching, bear in mind that this cache is going to be attached to a RAID array, your storage there of data and presenting its benefits to that area of storage. But bear in mind, it's a two-way street. And the SSDs, whether you are going to convert them from two SSDs in a read-only cache to a read-write cache, or you're going to upscale them and replace them with new SSDs, maybe one is broken and you're replacing it, Apart from the very, very, very modern releases in, say, DSM-7 Beta and some of the upgrades that have come to QTS recently, a lot of systems still require you to dismount the storage at the same time. So if, for example, you are running uh, a hard drive array there, maybe you've got a RAID 5 and you're supporting a few hundred shared users for home and business utilization and you've got caching there, to support some of those shared drives and thumbnail generation and stuff like that and config files in the background and you suddenly decide, you know what, I'm gonna upgrade that SSD cache. Bear in mind that if you dismount the SSD cache, it will dismount the storage until the operation is completed. Now, 
depending on the size of the SSDs, because they will wipe in advance, they're sort of tying of loose ends between the hard drive storage array and the SSD cache. The amount of time that that um, storage array is offline does change between systems. It could be anything from 15 seconds to 15, 20, or even 30 minutes. So if you're going to dismount the SSD cache, for one reason or another, bear in mind that a lot of systems will still dismount the storage for all the other users and they will it will sever all of their access there. It will be reinstated and all the shares that were there before will be reinstated either after you upgrade the SSD cache or remove the SSD cache entirely, but bear that in mind. And with a lot of newer systems, and again, DSM-7 Beta here, they did talk about how they're doing right back on the SSD cache so that the data is sent back when necessary, bear in mind that it is still very prevalent on some systems that removing or configuring the SSD cache will dismount the storage, albeit temporarily, for quite a while for some of us. But these are things to bear in mind if you're going to go down the road of SSD caching on your NAS. If you've got any further questions, bung them there in the comments. And if there's points I've missed and there's enough of them, we'll do a follow-up video. But otherwise, click like. If you've enjoyed the video, click subscribe to learn more and visit the links in the description to learn more about the right way to pursue SSD caching on your NAS. I will see you next time.